Friends, tomorrow is the uh, concluding day of the year of Masi. We have been celebrating as a, as a great grand year of one year of many charitable works, many good reflections, and many good teachings on Jesus' exhortation to be merciful. And everyone who is merciful is called as Christian in the extended sense. Everyone who is merciful shall be called as a Christian in the very extended sense. And in the first reading, we have seen Moses asking God to show his glory, asking his name, and God is showing his, him his glory. And from behind, Moses see, sees God walking. And there are few vocabularies which God spoke, and Moses said, What were they? Can you remember anything that the Lord revealed that Moses heard from in between the cross? Anything? Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 8. I am a merciful God. I am a gracious one. I am slow in anger. And I am steadfast in love. Four vocabularies the Lord is using to show the identity of God. What is the first one? I am the one who is merciful. And the second one is? No, I am gracious. And the third one? And slow to anger. And the fourth one? And steadfast in love. So we are going to take it in three vocabularies. So what is mercy in the Bible can be summarized or just explained through these three vocabularies. One is, I am a merciful God. Second is, I am a gracious God. Third is, I am steadfast in love. Speak it out. God is steadfast in love. God is steadfast in love. God is merciful. God is merciful. And God is gracious. And God is gracious. So this is the name what God revealed when Moses asked for who are you? Who is it? God is merciful. God is gracious. God is gracious. And God is steadfast in love. So you should understand the occasion now. How many times the law was given to Moses? Two times. What happened with the first time? The yeah, first time Moses came down with the, uh, the tablets and he saw idol worship among the community. He threw the tablets down and broke it. Moses was furious executor of the law of God at the first time. Therefore, before giving the second tablets, God is giving him a long advice. Long advice and he is bringing out a man of common sense in the minister. And therefore God is telling, who am I who is going to give you the commandment? Is it a furious God? He is not a furious God. The nature of the God who gives a commandment is, he is merciful, he is gracious and he is first in love. I invite you to listen to me very keen because I am going to use some foreign vocabulary. Okay? Four in vocabulary. That is from Hebrew. The first one is, I am a merciful God. The word used is Rahum. Okay? Rahum. Rakuma we can say or Rakum we can say. Okay? Rakum is the first word used in the uh, in, in Exodus chapter 34 8 to explain, I am a merciful God, Rakum. And the Rakum has got a, it is a root word and it has got another word coming from Rakham, that is Rakham, Rakum and Rakham. It just means the primary meaning of this vocabulary is womb. What is it? Womb. So Anthony de Mello, Father Anthony de Mello has said, God is wombish. What is God? God is wombish. And the first time, it's a technical term, okay? Don't say, who is God? God is wombish. Never go and tell outside, okay? God is wombish means it is an explanatory, a catechetical term to teach you how mercy works. Who has got a womb? A mother has got a womb. It is a female character and a feminine character to have a womb. A man, as much as he is, he can have only a big belly. Okay? Nothing else. So, womb is a female 
privilege to carry a child and to bring forth the generations is a blessing given to a mother and a woman. And therefore, God has got a female character. So when God is speaking about his mercy, concern for the other, the vocabulary comes, from, comes out very close to maternity. Maternity, very close to maternity, the vocabulary is used to explain the nature of God. God is boobish. Why is it peculiar to a mother? Mother cannot forget the child. Mother may correct a child. Mother may be angry with the situation. But the womb is a place of relationship. It's a constant place of remembrance where a mother can never forget her child. So God is using the first vocabulary to explain that He is merciful and He is caring and He has put concern for you and me. The vocabulary used is He is boobies. Because He has generated you, He has given you birth, He is a father and mother for you. And whatever happens in life, in your life, or however you go every aspect from the very nature of God, God can never forget you. So put up your hand for the God who loves and say, My Father God is merciful. My Father God is merciful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Father God is merciful. My Father God is merciful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God loves me like a mother. My God loves me like a mother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now we come to the second name. Second name is God is. God is gracious and again a feminine trait is going to come. And if you can remember, what is the word for a gracious man or a gracious woman? If ever you have to say in a biblical term, what name would you give for that person? What name would you give? Sister, I will give this there in my bag. If I don't forget, I'll give you. Okay. And now the second chance. Anybody, if you get a chance to name someone. No, in the tame with in the tame with the grace of God, what would we suggest? There's only one man who has appeared before the birth of Jesus, somebody who is John. John is the name is Hanan. Okay? Hanan. Yah Hanan is Yo Hanan. Okay? John is a short name of Yah Hanan. And the Hinani is a what? In a Hanun or Hinani is the word for Grace. Hanun or Hineni is the word for grace. And now you can understand that, listen to me carefully. Grace, what is grace? I explained in the morning, what is grace? Grace is an unmerited gift. Unmerited gift, no? It's a simple, gracious gift of God for you. So when you give somebody a gift that is unworthy of, what you are coming out of? Are you going away from the person or are you coming towards the person? Towards the person. That means you are stepping down to somebody who doesn't merit it. So, Hanan, gracious. God is gracious means it is an act of coming down. And it is also a feminine concept. Can you imagine when is it that a mother comes very close leaning to the lady? So, exactly, exactly this feeling time. Exciting is a feeding time, is the time mother comes very leading towards the baby. And therefore, the second vocabulary is in the Bible to show the mercy of God is Hanun, gracious, just like a mother coming down towards the baby. Why the mother comes closer to the baby? Because the baby herself for himself cannot find feet, cannot ask the mother. Therefore, in mercy, in love, the mother comes down and leads towards the baby. So that is the second meaning, and that is a God who is coming down to your, down to your helpless situations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put up your hand and say, My God Father is gracious. My That means 
means he has given you birth and he has established a relationship with you and whatever happens in life, he cannot forget it. And at the second level, if he has given you birth, he is going to be providing God for you. He is going to be providing God means naturally he has to lead towards you. It is not your marriage that is going to matter, marriage or unmarriage. He is going to come down to you, to your positions, wherever you are. Or whatever family you are, whatever color you are, or whatever nation you are, the Lord is going to come down in mercy towards you. And the third one is, steadfast love. Steadfast love, the vocabulary used is hesed. Hesed, okay? Hesed is the vocabulary used for uh, steadfast love of God. And that's very common and very famous. Hesed means... It is an inseparable love of God. It is an inseparable love of God and it is going to continue. Even the mountains may go away and the times and seasons may go away, but the love of God shall never depart from you. I am coming down with an endless mind for you, is the word of God saying. And therefore, the third level of the mercy of God is, it is going to be steadfast love of God. That is an unchanging love of God and going to come and consume you completely without looking for your merit. So the third level, say, my God Father is steadfast in love. My God Father is steadfast in love. My God Father constantly loves me. Gracious, gracious means he is going to lead towards you, come towards you. Whatever be your unmerit or frailty, God will come reach out to you. And the third level, he is not simply a one-time visitor in your life. He is not going to be a visitor who is knocking at morning or evening. But he is going to be there with you in steadfast love means. Every occasion, every moment and throughout your life he is going to be with you. And that is why in the profession of faith we confess our faith like this way. I believe in God the Father Almighty who created heaven and earth. And I believe in until life everlasting. I believe until life everlasting. It is not a visitor. Just through my life, even before my birth and even after my Death is going to be with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And therefore the gospel says now when Jesus saw the crowd, he had compassion on them. Okay? When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. And in the New Testament, if we see, there are three occasions where Jesus is telling, I have compassion for these people. The first instance we read today from Matthew's gospel, chapter 9, verse 34 says, uh, I have compassion for this crowd. When is it that a group becomes a crowd? Yours is a crowd or a, almost like a family. What do you feel? Do you share each other? Crowd is someone, no? If you happen to see a pickpocketer on the road or on a bus, sometimes the crowd becomes very active for one cause. Somebody pickpockets and he's caught and everybody will give a smash on him. And they are united for smashing. And after smashing, they will be dispersed in one will go to Majestic, other one will go to Shivaji Nagar, and someone else will go to Dairi Sakhar. And they are dis just gone, dispersed. Crowd is without a center, they are gathered. So Jesus felt sorry and compassion for the crowd, and therefore what he did? He did three times, I told you, the vocabulary occurs, he had compassion. The first time when he had compassion for the people, what he did was, he selected tall people and he sent out the dove. So the message is, the apostles, we are built on the apostles, the church is built on the apostles, and there is, every time there is a possibility that we go disintegrated. When we don't feel Christ in the center of our life, when we don't feel the scripture in the center of our life, when we don't feel the Eucharist in the center of our life, there is a constant fear in our life that we could go disintegrated. You would be a Karnataka Christian, 
and another one would be a Kerala person, and a different one would be a Tamil person, and another one would be a Mangalorean person, and maybe a different Bombay person, and a Manipuri person, and a Naga person would be there. But who is the Christian? We are the one united around the body of Jesus, and there is only one shepherd and Lord for us. Whatever languages or whatever color or creed we are, but we are all one in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus had compassion and he sent down his disciples to earn them. So what is the mercy of God in the gospel at the first level? It is the ministers of the church and the very Christian he sent down in mercy towards the other. So the parallel text from the Old Testament, the first time it says God is merciful and the gospel Jesus says you should be merciful and you should be a compassionate minister sent down to your brother and your sister. Hallelujah. 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 Now put up your hand and say, my God is merciful. My God is merciful. My faith teaches me to be merciful. My We have the second instant. Okay, in the second place, what happens? There is a great crowd gathered around Jesus, and they are hungry. And Jesus is asking, I am feeling pity for these people, compassion for these people. And then instantly, Jesus turned towards the disciples and asked, What have you got? What have you got? So each one of us is sent out in ministry to care and nurture the faith of the other. Is our first compassion, first mercy. And at the second level, the God is asking us, what have we got in your pocket? What have we got in your energy level? What have we got in your family to share with others? So whenever you are going to serve a ministry as a nurse, you are spending your energy in healing the other. Do you understand? You are spending your energy in healing the other when you work as a nurse in a hospital. Hallelujah. 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 And the Lord is asking the disciples when he sees the hungry people, what have you got with you? Jesus knows there are injections, syringes there in the hospital. He knows there are many tablets, but he needs a fine person to grant healing for those who come here. And therefore the mercy of God and the supplies of the world can be given to the worthy people only in and through you and me. So the Lord is inviting us. Be merciful and be generously coming out to the other. And at the third level now we have the instance in John's Gospel, chapter 14, 1 and as well as 18. In 1 and 18, the words telling us is Jesus. Uh, had pity on the disciples for he and then he told them I shall not leave you orphans but I shall send you the Holy Spirit I shall not leave you orphans and I shall send you a Holy Spirit and therefore the third compassion the Lord felt was for the loneliness of humanity and the loneliness of the disciples therefore Jesus uh, gave the words of compassion in the form of the Holy Spirit and what is the Holy Spirit going to do? Holy Spirit will be, will be the perfect companion for those who are lonely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you must see, every Christian is called out to be a companion to the other one. A companion shall not belong to anybody. You should make sure, okay? A companion is the one who accompanies with the other in mercy, in love, in support, in showing the way and also in helping each other. But it is not going to get married on the way. Okay? So you can be a companion with anybody that comes to you. Because it is Christian charity to be a good guy, to be a good friend, and to be a helper, and to be showing the way. It doesn't mean that you go with anybody and go with anybody and get married on the way. First day with the first one and second day with the second one. Because the Catholic spirit is teaching you to show the way and be a good companion. Good companions will accompany to the extent that the other one needs and then consoles and comes back. 
His ministry of companionship is the conversion of the Father taught us by the, in the image or in the principle or in the power of the Holy Spirit given by Jesus Christ. I shall give you a helper. So in Luke's gospel we have the perfect model of it in the Good Samaritan story. In the Good Samaritan story, if you can remember what does he do? When he saw the injured man on the road, what did he do? He came down. So what is the first commandment by Jesus when he said, I have compassion? He sent out the disciples. So in compassion, if anybody wants to be the witness of the mercy of God, the first thing we should do is be ready to come down. Unless and until you and I come out from the, the comforts of our seats, comforts of our location, comforts of our friendship, we can never be the servers of mercy. And at the second level, what does this man do? He really applied oil and wine on the wounds of this man. So that is the second level. And what is the second question Jesus is asking? I have compassion for these people and what have you got to the disciples? And what did the good Samaritan do? He took the oil and the wine and applied it on the wounds of the man. See, in the, in the Middle East, a traveler will be carrying wine and uh, oil, not for selling. It's not for selling, it is his food. Hallelujah. It is his food because I myself have taken oil for food in the sense they apply olive oil on the bread and eat. So they have oil and wine on the way means it is their food. And the good Samaritan is supplying his food as a medicine for the other. So the second example you see, this man is providing his survival for the healing of a different man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So mercy is always giving your resources for the support of the earth. And the third level, what does he do? He carries the man, he accompanies the man unto the inn, and then he pays there and he says, stay here and I shall come back if you need. He doesn't start a family life with the man, mature man. What he does? He carries him on to the inn, he pays for everything, and then he says, if you need me again, I will come back. So third level is always the vanity, and you should understand, in the Gospel of John, the best relationship explained in the Gospel of John is friendship. And that is the best relationship we can establish above all other relationships on the earth. If a husband and wife are good friends, you cannot explain the enjoyment and the freedom that they will be having between them. Because John's Gospel chapter 15, Jesus says, I call you friends, I call you friends, no disciples, no servers, no saints, no holy ones, but I call you friends, my dear friends. The best relationship ever explained in the Gospel of John is friendship and only in friendship we can do what even a slave cannot do. Shall you not do for your friends even the mean jobs which you cannot get done by payment? You will do because that is why Jesus says a friend will always sacrifice his life for the other. And therefore as we are going to conclude the year of mercy, making sure that our God is merciful, our God is gracious, our God is steadfast. And Jesus is asking us a parallel. You be a companion sent out to the other. You be a provider of your provision for the other. And you will be the one who will be coming out in help for the other. Hallelujah. Put up your hand and say once again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus.
Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We'll bring our offering to the Lord.